Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another episode of What in the World is Going On. I am your host, Brad Hurst, together with technical support by Alan Gillies. Uh, we're going to continue with our look into Daniel chapter 11. Uh, now, we're not doing an exegesis through Daniel chapter 11. What we're doing is we're doing off what, we, what we're doing with what is called a checklist out of Daniel chapter 11 for a person that's known as the King of the North. And uh, uh, if you, you if you look at our episode from last week, you can see we make the connection between him and Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, Revelation 13, and, and so forth. And what we did last week is some of the things that we saw in the checklist were uh, that this was an individual who was a, a man who was going to have no regard for the desire of women. We see that in verse uh, 37 of uh, chapter 11, and we see that he'll also build a, uh, he's, he's going to honor a god of fortresses. And we talked about the mega military structure that's being built by Turkey right now, in addition to other uh, forts and fortifications around the Mediterranean and uh, in other parts of uh, the Arab world, along the Persian Gulf and the, and the Indian Ocean, and, and in, in Cyprus as well. So um, a lot of military buildup uh, being done by Turkey. Uh, another characteristic they're looking for in also in uh, in Daniel chapter 11 is is that uh, he's going to make a claim to be God. He's going to exalt himself above all that is called God. And so uh, out of just that list alone, we're, we're basically two for three. And so uh, we want to take some time to kind of look at Daniel chapter 11. Uh, I'm just going to read the section here and just briefly touch on some things and then get into some more of our checklist here. Uh, Daniel chapter 11, we're starting in verse 21. We start there because this is, uh, when you read this section right here, this is one person all the way through. Some want to say that this is Antiochus Epiphanes, but it is not. Uh, you see, he just does not fit. And in addition to the fact that you have to insert a gap between 35 and 36, and there's no reason for us to uh, suggest that there's a gap there other than we are trying to make something fit. So uh, my understanding, this is uh, all, same person all the way through from verses thirty, or verses twenty-one through forty-five, and we start off in uh, verse twenty-one where it says, uh, "And in his place shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And with the arms of a flood shall that be overflung from before him, and he shall be broken. Yea, also the prince of the covenant." And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. He shall come up with a small, uh, with a, he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them prey and spoil and riches, and shall forecast his devices against strongholds even for a time. It says, and he shall stir up his power uh, against uh, the king of the south with a great army, and the king of the south shall be stirred up again, to, shall be stirred up with battle, or to battle with a very great and mighty army, but he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they, they that feed upon the fortune of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings' hearts shall be due to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. So at this point in time, what you have is you have a guy who, who enters into what Daniel calls uh, the fattest parts of the province. And the province that he's referring to is a province in, in uh, the Persian Empire where he was at at the time he had this prophecy you see, uh, back in uh, Daniel chapter 10, uh, he's by the river uh, Hilkadel, and that's uh, all, that is known as the Tigris River. So, uh, so he's in the uh, territories in and around Old Babylon in the Persian Kingdom, uh, in the province of Babylon. And what we find out is that this person, who's known as the King of the North, he's going to enter into the vast portions, I think, of that province. He's going to come in peaceably, and he's going to bring all kinds of spoil, booty, loot, riches, prey, and so forth. And he's just going to he's just going to walk right in. But what he's actually doing is he's actually forecasting devices. All right. In fact, when it says that he's going to bring all that stuff in, it end that statement ends with a colon, and then it says, "Yea, he shall forecast devices." The word "yea" there is basically putting emphasis on what was already said. Okay, telling us why he's doing what he's doing. 
He's bringing in all this loot with the intent of forecasting devices against that particular uh, area of the province, which right now is actually known as, as Iraq. Then it goes on to tell us that this same individual is going to uh, begin to stir up his armies against the king of the south, which we later on, on can see is actually Egypt. And uh, in stirring up his armies against the king of the south, the king of the south is going to stir up a very great and mighty army against him. But as we see is that um, it's not going to stand because those individuals who are sitting at the king of the south's uh, table are going to devise mischief against him. They're going to conspire against him. And they're going to undermine him, and they're going to be traitors working with the uh, king of the north, all right? In fact, what we find out is what's happening. It says, uh, yea, again, telling us exactly how how the, the king of the north is going to forecast devices against the king of the south by having infiltrators at the highest forms of government. And I, I'm, I'm going to guess he's going to be successful at that because he is going to show that he can make promises and make good on his promises, uh, and maybe even, you know, promises of wealth and riches to those who might cooperate with him. But in addition to that, we find out that at some point in time, both the king of the north and the king of the south are going to get together and they're going to kind of meet together with primarily, most likely with the intent of, of trying to form some sort of agreement between each other. But they're going to speak lies to one another. So, so uh in fact, uh, I, I want to read something to you uh, right here. This comes to us out of a uh, out of uh, a, a magazine or a publication that's called um, it's called uh, Media Monitors. It's June twenty first, twenty twenty, and in this particular article, we're told that um, uh, Egypt's president warned that an attempt by Turkey-backed forces in Libya to attack the strategic city of Sirte would cross a red line and trigger a direct Egyptian military intervention into the conflict, all right? And so uh, um, just not too long ago, Egypt is telling uh, Turkey, man, you keep messing up in, in Libya and we're, we're going we're gonna to come after you. But later on, we have another article uh, written on July 26, 2020 by Global Defense Corp. And it says, Egypt itching for a war with Turkey, can Egypt compete? The Egyptian division, or shall I say the, the Egyptian decision to intervene in Libya could be a fatal mistake by the Egyptian government as the Turkish armed forces will have the upper hand and Egypt will only count the body bags or many will fall down slain. So um, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I begin to see that, you know, another one of those things that mark off on the checklist is a conflict between the king of the north and the king of the south, okay? And and we, we do see that, that Egypt and, and Turkey both are at odds with each other. But in addition to that, uh, there's something else to take into consideration right here. All right. Um, there is a, uh, a statement here uh, out of um, Istanbul, Turkey. And it says, uh, Turkey aligning ties with Egypt and Gulf rivals. This comes from Al Jazeera. This is 9621. Istanbul, Turkey, Turkish and Egyptian fish officials will gather around the table on Tuesday amid a thaw in relations between Turkey and its Arab neighbors after nearly a decade of mutual distrust and outright hostility, okay? So you've got these two powers coming together and meeting around a table. In fact, we find out that there was um, another news article they came across that that uh, a couple months back, they, they've already met one time to arrange for this meeting, and the purpose of this meeting is to eventually arrange a meeting between the King of the North and the king of the south. And so <laughs> if we can't check off that gathering together at one table off right now, I think that we're going to be able to soon be able to check that one off as well. Uh, so, so, um, but let's go on. Let's just, I'm, I'm, I'm just bouncing around here looking for things that we can start to check off on the checklist to see if maybe we can start identifying where we might start looking for the man of sin, Antichrist, or the king of the north, or whatever you want to call him. All right. Uh, Daniel chapter 11, verse uh, uh, 25 through 6, uh, actually, Daniel chapter 11, uh, verse 43, uh, says, But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. That's actually the king of the north once he vanquishes Egypt. Okay, But I want to look at the second portion of this verse where it says, And Libyans and Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Now, this is an article that comes straight out of the International Institute for Iranian Studies, March 8th. 
2021, and I highly recommend you read this article. I'll have all these articles listed in our, our um, uh, uh, notes down below. All right, it says the return of Turkish influence by Libya is, <coughs> excuse me, the return of Turkish influence uh, to Libya is an integral objective for the Erdogan government, given its promising investment opportunities, oil resources, and significant geopolitical location. Serving as a springboard for Turkish influence into the Mediterranean and a land bridge connecting the Arab world, Africa, and Europe. Now, Turkey is exploiting the current conflict and divisions inside Libya to implement its old scheme, which was revived following the so-called Arab Spring, to expand Turkish influence in the Arab world through the Maghreb, North Africa. The goal is to control the Aegean Sea and most of the Mediterranean and the Black Sea. And if you actually read this article, it goes into great detail. It's about, an, uh, about a half hour read. It goes into great detail about the, the enormous influence that, that Turkey is beginning to war, wield in the Islamic world, in, in, the, in the Mediterranean and the Arab world, and even further east. So um, then we have this article here, okay? It says... Uh, ties between Turkey and Ethiopia have been strengthened by their latest agreements. This comes from Memo, Middle East Monitor, August 25th, 2021. The visit to Ankara to Ethiopian, I'm sorry, the, biz, the visit of Ankara of Ethiopian Prime Minister Abi Hamad on 18 August was significant. The signing of bilateral agreements between Turkey and Ethiopia introduces another world power into the horn of Africa politics. Turkey's bilateral agreements with Ethiopia are likely to tilt the balance of power in the ongoing negotiations about the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. By the way, the, the, the primary financiers of that dam are China and Turkey. And um, shut that water off to the dam, uh, at that dam there, and uh, you shut the waters of the Nile off to uh, Egypt. So Egypt's pretty upset about this. So, and this is a negotiation, uh, shall we say, leveraging tool that... Uh, uh, Turkey has over over Egypt. So uh, anyway, so there, there's concern about that, and there's also concern about the conflict in Tigray in the Tigray region, and that that Tigray region happens to be the area where the Ark of the Covenant is is said to be located. And there's a lot of conflict going on there. I got some articles, uh, some videos uh, in my YouTube channel, other places my YouTube YouTube channel. You can go look at that and see what's going on with that. According to News Business Ethiopia, Turkish and Ethiopian officials assigned a military signed a military cooperation agreement in the presence of the leaders of the two countries. So, okay, uh, Ethiopians and Libyans are going to be at his uh, footsteps. Uh, it looks like if you can't check those off, you're going to be able to check those off pretty quickly. So, what do we got that we can maybe check off now? Well, okay, you've got the right religion, no regard for women, all right. He's certainly building these gigantic military fortress structures around in Turkey and in, in parts of the Mediterranean, and Persian Gulf, and the, uh, in, in the Horn of Africa and what have you. Um, he's certainly got the right uh, opponent, shall we say, or enemy, which is Egypt. Uh, you've got these two powers coming together at the, at the table. <laughs> you've got uh, a, a tremendous amount of Turkish influence inside of Libya. You've got a tremendous amount of Turkish influence inside of, of uh, Ethiopia, all right? I mean, at this point in time, what else? I mean, what else are we looking for? To be honest with you, I, I, I really don't know what else we're looking for. Um, but there are some other things. In fact, there are some other developments that uh, of recently have just come about. And uh, uh, for the sake of brevity in this video, I'm going to cut it short right here. But we're going to get into a very significant development inside of Turkey that uh, I think are going to, is, is really going to be a shock to a lot of us. I know it, it shocked me when I read it uh, back on uh, uh, just yesterday. In fact, it, it almost made me sick to my stomach to, to see what was uh, currently underway inside of Turkey. And so I want to spend a little bit more of, of a video just on that subject alone. And uh, um, so that'll make that for the subject of our next video. So... So, ladies and gentlemen, we're just doing a checkoff list, all right? I'm not calling out and saying anyone is Antichrist yet, but I'm getting, I mean, if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, sounds like a duck, you know, you might start thinking you might have a duck here. 
Okay, you got all the, a lot of the right things are starting to fall into place. And um, I think it's time for us to, to get serious and start, uh, and start looking and start taking the opportunity to share this with other people, be involved in our local churches and uh, be ready to be the go-to people for others as uh, many are gonna run to and fro uh, as knowledge increases about, about the vision. So until next time, thank you for tuning in. I'm sorry this is short and quick, but uh, um, I just wanted to make this, I, I just wanted this to kind of have a, a check off list here. So good day and until our next time, thank you.